Hi everyone, my name is Amy and today I'll be focusing on how nutritionists and other specialists determine the number of kilojoules from calories. As you may all know, our body needs some sort of fuel to sustain a healthy living style. We call this fuel as something that can be measured as food energy. What exactly is food energy? It's just as the name suggests, it's the energy obtained by living organisms through food that is available through cellular respiration. Most of you are already probably familiar with the term metabolism. Cellular respiration is just a fancy name for your body metabolizing the biochemical energy and the nutrients of food and creating all the essentials for your cells. Now as I've said before, food energy can be measured. For this project, I will be focusing on the different procedures that are used by nutritionists and other specialists to determine the number of kilojoules that are stored in different kinds of food. Now what's the difference between calories and kilojoules? Are they not the same thing? The answer is both yes and no. While both are units of measurements for calculating food energy, for this investigation, we'll be relying on calories to help find the number of kilojoules. Pick up on the wrapper nearest to you. You will notice that most Canadian food labels that you see will explain their nutritional facts through calories. Note the capital C. What exactly is a calorie? In a quick summary, it is the amount of energy that is needed to increase the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. And 1 calorie, or kilocalorie if you will, equals 4.184 kilojoules. Now, how does one find the number of calories in food content? For decades, physicists have used an instrument called a bomb calorimeter. What is a bomb calorimeter? Derived from the Latin terms calor, meaning heat, and metron, meaning measure, it is a device that is used to determine the heat of the combustion by igniting a sample inside a steel vessel at a high pressure of oxygen and measuring the resulting rise in temperature. On section 14.4 in your chemistry textbook, it explains how a calorimeter works. Here's a step-by-step -step procedure of how a bomb calorimeter works. Before the food undergoes any ignition, it must first be properly prepared by these four important steps. Weigh the food. Blend the food until it's absolutely turned to mush. Freeze dry. Grind up the dry mush into a fine powder. Foods are normally dehydrated prior to the trial so that the energy required to heat and evaporate the water content will not affect the outcome data. This is a diagram of how a bomb calorimeter looks like. It is composed of a thermometer, wire for ignition, stirrer, water, reactants, and a steel bomb. Approximately 1 gram of the food is weighed and placed inside a stainless steel container or the decomposition vessel that is filled with oxygen. Next, the sample is ignited through a cotton thread connected to an ignition wire inside the container. As the flaming freeze-dried powder burns, all the elements that compose the food are burned or oxidized. For example, hydrogen to water, carbon to carbon dioxide, nitrogen reacting to nitric acid, minerals being oxidized, so on and so forth. As the samples burn, it also produces heat that you can measure. Scientists call this direct calorimetry, since you directly measure how many calories there are in a certain food. The unit for the amount of energy inside the food sample is small calories, or joules per gram. To determine the number of kilojoules, you simply multiply the number of calories by 0.004184. So that was one method of figuring out the number of kilojoules in food content. Let's now move on to a lab that also demonstrates this. The purpose of this lab is to calculate the number of calories in different foods, then converting them into the number of kilojoules. The materials that are needed are 20 milliliters of water. I used a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder twice to get the amount. The sample food content for this lab peanut and a Cheetos piece was used, a thermometer, a test tube, a lab stand, a lighter, a needle, tin foil, and two clamps, one for the thermometer and one for the test tube. The safety precautions that were considered for this lab include tying long hair back, rolling up loose sleeves, and wearing goggles. Since there will be open flame, it is advised to be attentive all around your surroundings. 
and have a backup plan in case the flame transfers to unwanted areas. Check with the supervisor as well, as well as classmates, to ensure that nobody is prone to peanut allergies before proceeding with the experiment. Black soot may form in the air and on the bottom of the test tube, which may stain clothing. Before conducting the lab, the apparatus was set up like so. The thermometer and the test tube were clamped to the lab stand with the thermometer inside the test tube. Recording the temperature of the water prior to the ignition, which is about 24 degrees Celsius. Carefully poked the needle through the desired food and made a stand by modeling the tin foil and poking the other end of the needle through it. Ignited the food with a lighter. Be very careful and handle the open flame with extreme caution. Recorded the temperature in which the flames dispersed after burning the food. The same procedures were conducted for the peanut and finally the results were recorded into a chart. Have a look! Now the number of calories can be measured. To raise the temperature of 20 grams of water from 24 degrees Celsius to 43.8 degrees Celsius, it can be expressed by this equation. This is called the heat equation, where Q equals the heat flow in calories, M is the mass of water in grams, C is the specific heat of water, which is 1 degree per calorie per gram, and delta T is the temperature change in degrees Celsius. You can obtain this value by subtracting the ending water temperature by the starting water temperature. Therefore, by plugging in all your values, 396 calories are produced. You may be thinking, for one Cheetos piece, that's a lot. This may be because you're so used to seeing the numbers and kilocalories on the labels. If it makes you feel any better, that's only just about 0 0.396 kilocalories. The final step was now to convert the number of calories to kilojoules. Multiply the number of calories that has been calculated in step 6 by 0 0.004184, the value of 1 kilojoule per calorie to get the final answer in kilojoules. Now how is this relevant to our daily life? In our Canadian society today, the number of people that are overweight or obese has increased over the past 25 years. Keeping yourself fit will greatly reduce the risk of some diseases and conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, and strokes. With the knowledge of how much calories there are in packaged products, one can take into consideration and adjust accordingly to the individual caloric needs. Evidently, calories come abundant in larger portion sizes. You may be eating more than what you realize. Try cutting down portions little by little every single day, or serving smaller portions and offering seconds to those who want more, just to stay in check. Which brings me to how industries have stepped up to now reduce the number of calories they have in their products. The nutritional information has been labeled more clearly and you may have already noticed that restaurants are now offering lower calorie entrees and alternatives. The government of Canada as well as health networks across the country has been, even now, working to improve education for not only the youths but for citizens of all ages in promoting good health and active lifestyles. I'm sure you've all heard of Canada's Food Guide. It is a diet planning document produced by Health Canada and the second most requested Canadian government publication right after the income tax forms. 
Being able to calculate the number of calories that you're consuming is extremely beneficial to healthcare practices, as well as improving your daily lifestyle. If you're interested in learning more, visit the Health Canada website listed here and in the comments below. Thank you for viewing my presentation on determining the number of kilojoules in different kinds of food. Check out 14.4 on page 601 in your textbook for more details.